Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today in this video I'll be showing you how you can make your own grenades in Unity and let's get into how it's going to be looking like. So uh, you can see that I'm using simple objects that I found in the Unity game engine. So cubes, spheres and a capsule and also plane for the flow. And I'm using spheres to be uh, using as the grenades and you can see that I'm able to hold the grenade and release it and it will be shooting towards the direction that I'm facing. You can change that very easily if you want to. I just chose to do it this way. So you can see uh, it actually interacts with the objects or the enemies in my case because these are supposedly enemies and they, it's dealing damage to them if you were to check on the console. So it deals damage depending on the distance or how far or close uh, the enemy or whatever is colliding, whatever is in range of the collision uh, or the explosion is um, taking. So. Um, let's get into what we need for this uh, specific video. We're going to need a grenade, so a prefab for the grenade. And for this, I just used a sphere, as I said. So sphere, create a sphere. It has a collider. It has the script that I'm going to be showing you right, on, right now. And also the rigid body with the kinematic enabled. So I'm able to hold it without actually having to add any additional code. And I'll be showing you how this looks without the kinematic. Um, so I'll first disable the grenade script so it doesn't explode. And if I were to disable the kinematic, you'll see that the uh, grenade that kind of gets stuck because rigid bodies move independently and don't actually work well with parenting. So that is why I have the kinematic. So if I were to enable it, you can see that it now follows me again. So that is the reason behind that. And also for the gravity, I had that disabled, but um, I might not need to do that. And I'm actually uh, re-enabling them, well, disabling the kinematic, enabling the gravity in the script. I'm going to be showing you right now so let's go on to the grenade script and have a look at how that looks and it's pretty similar to the explosion script that i've shown on the last video so if you've seen that you're probably very familiar with this one as well so uh, we need three variables for the explosions one is the force the radius the and the upwards modifier so how um, the explosion affects objects on the y-axis then we have the max time and the current time these are responsible for how long should the grenade last with the max time representing 4 seconds, so the grenade is going to be lasting 4 seconds before exploding and the current time is going to be slowly incrementing towards the 4. Once the current time is more than the max time, we're going to be setting the grenade to explode. We also have the max damage, so how much damage should the grenade be dealing uh, to the targets, so the enemies, and also a particle system that is going to be spawning afterwards when the grenade explodes. And in the start function, I'm going to be getting the particle system um, and you can see that it's static so all of the grenades are going to be getting a hold of this so I'm checking um, if this is empty and if it is I'm going to be getting the particle system from the um, resources uh, using its name uh, so make sure to include a particle system in the resource folder and in the update function we have uh, basically what I've explained above uh, we have the uh, current time being incremented using time with delta time and then checking if it's larger than the uh, max time, if it is, call the explode function. And in the explode function, we have uh, basically the same script as I've explained in the previous video for the explosions, but I'm going to briefly summarize it. We are going to be uh, creating an array of colliders, which you need to kind of predict how many uh, you are going to be colliding with, or basically setting a max amount of colliders to hit. So um, that is the 10, I've set 10. Uh, so the maximum elements that I'm going to be interacting with with the explosion is going to be 10. So um, make sure to have a kind of appropriate number if you need to target more. If you have, let's say, a huge army against you, you need to probably change that to a larger number, but you don't want it to be way too large as it's going to be taking up memory in the system. So keep that in mind. We are going to be using the overlap sphere non-allocation. and You can think of it as basically a sphere surrounding uh, the the grenade so the central position of this sphere is going to be the center of uh, our grenade and we're going to be getting all of the um, colliders within that range so the ra radius that we've kind of initialized above we're going to be using that and everything within the radius of that sphere is going to be stored in the hit colliders we're go going to be getting essentially the colliders of all of the objects within the radius that we defined and through that we're going to be looping through all of them and as you can see i'm getting the number of colliders here using that to loop and iterate through each and every one when and every one of them and 
we're going to be checking if the collider that we've hit uh, and the object that we've hit has a rigid body if it is we're going to be using the add explosion force to it and you can have a look at the um, documentation for this on the on unity website because it's really useful and, and very informative but just to uh, briefly summarize it we're passing in the force we've defined above the central point of the uh, explosion we also pass the radius and the upward modifier and through that we're going to be creating an explosion for each and every one of these objects and i'm also getting the enemy script and trying to get the enemy script because or not all of the objects in your game are going to have the enemy script so if it does we're going to be dealing damage to that based on the distance obviously you can change it to whatever you want if you want it to have flat damage you can just ignore this um, like that and it will just pass in the max damage that you want um, i try to use uh, this uh, kind of line right here where which basically will reduce the ma from the max max damage uh, some amount of it based on the distance so the further it is from the center point of the grenade the less damage you're going to be dealing you can copy that into your uh, in all your own script i'm going, not going to be um explaining it too much because um i don't want to waste too much time onto it um and then i'm going to be instantiating the particle system onto the point of the grenade and then just destroying the grenade and the reason that i've decided to use a separate game object for the particle system because if I were to include it as a child of the grenade, we're going to be destroying that as well. So that is why it's a separate um, particle system. It's not the most efficient way to do that, to do so, uh, but it's a very simple way, an efficient way, uh, well, effective way, uh, without having to do too much and too many lines of code into it. So um, you can improve that later on if you want to, and I can make a video about on how to improve it if you want me to. So comment below if you want me to do that. And okay, so that is all for the grenade script. And I'll be uh, first uh, showing you this function right here that we're calling from the enemy script. And the enemy script is very, very simple. So it has a health and the function that is take damage, which receives the damage and then just reduces the uh, health, uh, the damage from the health. And you can see that I don't even have, uh, you know, your dead kind of thing. I just reduce the health and print it out uh, as you see right here and also print out the damage. Uh, that is it for the enemy script. I also have uh, this script that is responsible for throwing the grenade is attached to the player and we have two variables one is getting the grenade object from the resources so similar to before and also getting the active grenade so whenever we are spawning a grenade we in case the player holds onto the grenade that as I showed before we need to kind of have that a grenade in memory and in store to be able to kind of manipulate it later on so this is what is going to be doing this variable it's going to be holding on to that grenade until the player releases it and in the update function uh, in my case i've used the mouse button you can use whatever button you like and whenever the player holds down the mouse button the left mouse button is going to be instantiating a new nade so you can see spawning a nade at the position and then just adding some height to it because I don't want it to be covered from the player. You can obviously set it to maybe the hand of the player that you're going to be, uh, let's say, obviously the player is going to be holding onto the grenade and throwing it. You can modify it as you like. I didn't pay too much attention to it because I feel like every everyone is going to have a different kind of approach to it. So this is what I've done. Uh, so I don't want to waste too much of your time. And then I need to include the quaternion identity, uh, which basically sets the rotation to nothing. Or zero zero zero, and then set the object so the nade, the nade that we just spawned as a child of the player to be able to follow the player and its movements. And I'm actually storing the uh, whatever this instantiate function returns. So the nade that I'm just spawning, I'm going to be storing it into the active nade. And in order for the nade to be thrown, we need to have the uh, mouse button to be released so to move up. And also, I'm also checking if the nade, if the active nade has something in it because if it's empty i don't want to be running this code for nothing so this is just an extra safety measurement so the moment the player releases it i'm going to be getting the component the rigid body component of the nade and setting the gravity to true you probably can get away with having the gravity enabled from, to start with but uh, this is how i've done it um, and then also setting the kinematic to false then adding some velocity to it again 
you're going to need to modify it to whatever you want. I just set it to shoot it diagonal diagonally and uh, using the forward and up uh, functions from the transform and just adding some speed to it. And then just setting the uh, parent to be null. So um, removing the nade from being a child of the player and then setting the active nade to null because we've withdrawn the nade. We don't need it to have it in our memory. So let's just show you the final result uh, one more time. And so, okay. You can see that I have the nade on my head and it will be exploding up. And you can see now I'm able to throw the nades and it will explode, deal some damage. As you can see on the console dealing some damage and kind of exploding and throwing uh, the enemies left and right. And okay, so that is it for the video. Hopefully you found it useful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe onto the channel. Uh, if you have any questions or any, re any recommendations for future videos, please comment them below. And thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day and goodbye.